This is not the story of the perfect carpet, or even of the people who make them. This is the journey of Hans, a modern epic of unbroken tradition. 1881, Badohi, a little-known place on the vast Indian subcontinent, close to the Ganges riverside town of Varanasi. An Englishman discovers a talented carpet-weaving community and sets up an enterprise. Soon, carpets made in India find their way to the residences and offices of the aristocracy in Western Europe. While he will always be remembered as the one who brought recognition to Badohi, little else is known of him except his name, A. Tellery. Today, over a century later, the carpet-making legacy of A. Tellery lies in the safe hands of the Batodia family. The new name of that legacy is Hans. The journey of a Hans handmade carpet is not by any means short or easy. To make the perfect carpet, it often takes many weeks of intensive work, calling for immense dedication on the part of craftsmen at all stages. The journey of a carpet begins with a thread. There are many kinds of yarn. Wool, which is most widely used, is largely from New Zealand and is known for a quality that keeps the carpet at its best for generations. There's also artificial viscose and pure silk, woven into finer textures. At the Hans Yarn Stockroom are bales of both coloured and undyed yarn for designers and weavers to pick from. Dyeing of the yarn is one of the most critical things in carpet making. The traditional way has the yarn stretched across poles, moved by hand. A step up from there is the wheeling of the yarn into hot tubs. This is still an efficient method of ensuring that the dye has done its job, and it's all done by hand. The new way, however, is entirely mechanized. While the old ways are still favored for certain kinds of color, the advantage of the electrical vat is that larger volumes can be dyed in shorter periods of time. Colors are chosen on the basis of a preset assembly of shades. While designers have the liberty to vary the color to whatever they wish, it takes a certain experience to know how the color will reproduce with different types of yarn under different kinds of light. Each shade is set against a palm, a reference for designers across the world. To design a carpet in the right way, one must know how it is made. While the carpet making process hasn't changed much over the century, Technology, though, has aided how carpets are designed. It all begins with an idea. Here you see a custom rug called Dali's Rose, a tribute to the great Spanish artist. The centerpiece of this extraordinarily designed carpet is a red rose. Ideas are transformed from a hand-drawn sketch to a computer-aided drawing. Colors, ratios and techniques are described to communicate to the craftsman the desired effect. Although it might seem so at first, carpet design is not two-dimensional. There are textures, colors and even depths to work with. To transfer a design to the right size, there's both technology and the precision of hand. Outlines are filled in with paint to represent the subtlety in shades. Printed designs are traced and marked to the minutest detail. An immense amount of concentration and a dedication to finesse is needed. Designs are then ready for weaving. At hands, both hand-knotted and hand-tufted carpets are made. Hand-tufted carpets are growing in popularity these days. Yarn is punched through a backing material and the weaver follows the pattern, switching colors and often even types of yarn as he moves on. The hand-eye coordination needed has oft been compared to that of an impressionist artist. Pile heights can vary tremendously based on the design and sizes can go from a small area rug to a wall-to-wall -wall carpet for a ballroom in a palace. 
Tufting is also done with an unpowered instrument and requires firm hands, a steady temperament and a skill that's rare in these times. A hand-tufted rug can take weeks to complete. The hand-knotted carpet is something else altogether. The carpet is woven by hand, knot by knot, inch by inch. Watching them work, it is hard not to stare at the rhythmic movement of their fingers as they slip a thread, the weft, into a loop around the vertical warp. A colour change in the pattern means a new thread, a new starting point, and there's the mesmerising rhythm again. There's an almost artistic harmony to this skill that seems to bind the soul of the weaver to the rug. It usually takes months to finish a hand-knotted carpet. In some instances though, such as when you seek to make one of the most intricate carpets in the world, it can take years. One of the finest hand-knotted carpet ever made in the world in wool pile. This carpet has got 4,900 knots in a square inch. And if I ask you to put 4,900 dots on a piece of paper with a fine pencil, you will not be able to do it easy. The warp of this carpet is pure silk and the weft is also pure silk and the pile of the carpet is pure wool. And when you talk about wool, it is the best wool we ever find in the world, that is Tush, from which you get the fine Kashmir shawls. That wool has been used to make this carpet. The count is 1000 count, which is a rare count, and it is hand spun. It has taken about one year time to get the wool ready, first of all, to make this carpet. We have used about 25 colors in this carpet. They have been moth proofed in a natural manner using neem and lime. You see, it has taken 13 years, 13 long years to make, make it. The weaver who made it and his two daughters, his name has been immortalized by getting it woven here on the edge of the carpet. We have also woven here the national flag. The date of when the weaving was started and the date of when the weaving was completed is also weaving on the finishing edge of the carpet. The inspiration from the rug came from his travels. I was visiting the Royal Austrian Museum in Vienna. It was a fascinating carpet, miniature of a very fine Polynesian rug. So we chose this design. If you just have a look at this carpet, you see the fringes. The lacing alone and the knotting of the lace has taken two months time. It is such a fine job. This carpet will go down in history as one of the finest hand knotted carpet in the world. It is a piece of great art. Whether the carpet is hand tufted or hand knotted, it goes through a series of processes, mostly by hand. The newly woven carpet is given a base. A mesh of fibre and a fabric backing are brought together by latexing, giving the entire piece strength. Dimensions are verified and the carpet is checked again against colour, pile quality and detail. Shearing, controlled by machine, prepares the carpet for the finer aspects of finishing. Finishing a hand's carpet is far more than technique. It requires a cultivated taste for quality. Carpets are finished in many ways, depending on the design. Boundaries between patterns are trimmed and cleared up, and pile lines are sorted by hand. Embossing helps lift the pattern off the surface. Bile heights and loops are styled in various ways to create a texture and aesthetic aligned to a specific design. All of these add depth and distinction to the carpet. Dali's rose is now taking shape as a true three-dimensional form. This is called sculpting. How the sculptor chooses to shape the rose depends on his individual sense of style.
Surging of the carpet defines its finished size. A craftsman loops yarn around the edges, effectively marking the final steps in the making of a hand's carpet. All this happens at the hands facilities in Batohi. Everything is in-house and integrated, from the yarn dyeing to finishing and even keeping weavers' tools at their best. Alongside contemporary and traditional rugs, the exalted Persian carpets are also an essential part of the Hans collection. Fashionable since 500 BC, the Persian collection includes the Braze, Isfahan and Kerman, to name a few. Fine silk is used most often, and each carpet tells a story steeped in either history or ancient myth. But Hans carpets are not just about area rugs meant for residences. Working with some of the world's foremost carpet designers, today you'll find a customized hands carpet in palaces, hotels, restaurants, offices and even luxury yachts and aircraft. From the Four Seasons to the Armani Hotel, from the White House to the MGM Grand Casino and across four continents. Best of all, though, is that you'll find a hands carpet in a hand store, so that anyone who truly appreciates the value of handmade beauty can take one home. Dali's Rose has now found its way to the hand store in Delhi to occupy pride of place. You see, the roof under which I am sitting is the house which was constructed by Mr. A. Tellery, the founder of this company, which we own. In 1880, you can imagine what kind of place Madhavi must have been during the British rule. It was just a cluster of villages. No electricity, no roads, no power, no water, nothing. This house is the house which he used till 1960 and we feel great. We still get a kind of a vibration of the presence of Mr. Tellery. What a legend he was. And we are trying to maintain the legacy. For Ravi Patodia, the legacy of A. Tellery is enmeshed not only in the tradition of carpet making hands employs today, but also in the spaces around. The regard for the past always remains. A hands carpet is crafted with thought and innovation, with imagination and dedication, with great care and passion not just to beautify a space, but to bring joy, to stir your soul. This is design emotion. No two carpets are precisely the same, and that's the beauty and genius of handmade. I was a thread once, and then I found my way. I was a stitch once, with so much to say. I wove together all the joy you seek, for I am the warmth, the passion, and the hands beneath your feet.